friends, I have today for you a gluten-free, dairy-free, and if you choose sugar-free magic cookie bar recipe. So we're starting with our oven preheating at 350 degrees, which I have done. And then you want a bowl, and I already put my almond flour in it. Um, we're using one and a quarter cups of almond flour. And then I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I am using two tablespoons of avocado oil, but you could choose to use a softened um, coconut oil if you'd like, something not too firm and hard, um, but not it doesn't have to be melted. Softened would be fine. Um, you could use ghee. Uh, if you can tolerate butter, you could certainly use a softened butter. And I have a, a mixture here of water and uh, monk fruit. Um, I wanted it to be a liquid form, and I do not have a liquid form of um, sweetener. You could uh, choose to use honey or maple syrup, but I have one tablespoon of monk fruit and a teaspoon of water. And if you wanted to substitute with uh, maple syrup or honey, you could certainly um, do just a tablespoon of that. Okay, and then I'm just going to use a fork and mix it all together. It's going to be kind of like a crumbly crumb, and then we're going to press it into the bottom of an 8x8 pan. And um, you want to line your pan with parchment paper so that you'll be able to get the cookie bars out easy. See the uh, crumbles? It's kind of a little bit moistened so that it'll press into the bottom of our pan. And I'm going to take my pan and I'm going to dump the almond crumble in there. going to use this bowl again in a minute so I'm trying to get all my crumbs out. If you want to use another bowl you certainly can but I was trying to make very few dishes. And you just want to evenly press this into the bottom on top of the parchment paper. And this is how it looks all pressed into the bottom of the pan. See, it holds together very well. I've got this tipped pretty good. It's not crumbling and falling out. And I'm just gonna set this aside for a minute. And I am going to use the bowl again. It's not terrible. Um, and I'm going to add in a quarter of a cup of monk fruit and a third of a cup of coconut milk. That is a full fat coconut milk and whisk them together and then I'm just going to set that aside for a minute. It gives the monk fruit time to kind of melt a little into the coconut milk. You could also use uh, maple syrup or honey if you are not concerned about your um, sugar. Um, and uh, I suppose you could use white sugar if you needed to, but if you were using white sugar, you'd probably just use sweetened condensed milk anyway, which is just loaded with sugar and not any good for you. I have two tablespoons of shredded coconut. I'm just going to sprinkle that over the, um, the uh, pressed in crust as evenly as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Okay, 
there's my coconut sprinkled in. I'm not sure if you can see that pretty well from there. Okay, and then I'm going to sprinkle over the top of that two thirds cups of chopped nuts. I ch I'm choosing to use pecans today, but you could use almonds or walnuts or macadamia nuts, anything you choose. I just happen to have pecans in the house today. So I'm spreading these over as evenly as possible. And then I'm taking two thirds cups of um, stevia sweetened chocolate chip. I'm sorry, did I say two thirds? It was two thirds cup of pecans. I'm using a half a cup of stevia sweetened chocolate chips over the top of the bars and just sprinkling them around as evenly as I can. And then I'm going to take and pour my coconut milk and a monk fruit mixture over the top of all of this and kind of drizzle it around um, as, as um, evenly as I can. Magic cookie bars are ready to go in the oven. They will bake at 350 degrees for 40 minutes and they will not burn but they will start to get fairly um, golden and dark and that's because we need for the the uh, monk fruit and the coconut milk to caramelize to, to give it that um, it'll hold together and give it that nice yummy goodness of uh, caramel. So I'm going to shut the camera off and I'll show you what it looks like before I put it in the oven. Shall we check and see if the cookie bars are done? Oh, those look lovely. They probably could go a little longer. The caramelness is um, not real dark, but if you don't mind it soft and not crispy, you could stay with them like that. But as you can see, it is not burnt. Uh, they've been in there for 40 minutes. And now we will need to let them cool and then put them in the refrigerator after they are at room temp so that we can cut them um, very easily. So I'll see you in a bit. So I have removed the pan from the refrigerator. They should be fairly chill. And now I'm just going to lift the parchment paper out of the pan. And then we can cut them. And I'm just putting them on a cutting board and I'm cutting them with a very large knife. You should be able to get about 16 squares unless you want a larger portion, then you'll get less. But I usually do four rows of four. And then I usually put them back into the um, pan and store them in the refrigerator. Uh, you could put them in another container if you like. I do have a cover for my 8x8 pan, so that's why I just put them in there. It's already been used and I don't have to dirty something else. So let's 
take a bite, shall we? Mmm. Yummy. I hope you enjoy your gluten-free, dairy-free, and if you choose, sugar-free magic cookie bars. Have a great day.